Good afternoon. Arsonists are being blamed for a fire which has devastated part of a school in West Sussex. Several classrooms at St. Philip Howard Catholic School at Barnum near Bognor Regis have been gutted. Police have been at the scene all day looking for clues. Battling against flames and toxic smoke, 60 firefighters were called to save the school near Bognor Regis. Their bravery helped contain the blaze, but a number of classrooms were destroyed and teachers at St Philip Howard Catholic School have told parents they don't know when they'll reopen. I just think it's disgusting. I mean, if it yeah. is done on purpose, then it's and just awful. It is. I mean, disrupting the school, um, you know, gutting for the teachers. And what, what do they get out of it? If it has started deliberately, what do they get out of it? Among the fire investigation team is Hattie the Labrador. She was sent in to try to sniff out accelerants like petrol or paraffin, but the state of the classrooms made her search difficult. The conditions are too... It's, it's obviously the building is, is pretty well destroyed on the inside. Um, there's a lot of fire debris on the floor. Uh, there's a lot of water on the floor, which doesn't help at the moment, but we're hoping to get most of that out, and then we'll go back in again and do another investigation afterwards. The school will be closed tomorrow, and with their term finishing this week, teachers will have to work hard to reopen this year. It's thought the fire started on the first floor. The flames and the smoke quickly spread onto the second floor, gutting the classroom there. Fortunately, though, the quick actions of the fire crews and the protection offered by the fire doors has meant the rest of the building hasn't been damaged. Wearing breathing apparatus, the firefighters entered the school to try to get to the source of the blaze. But despite stopping the fire, other parts of the building have been affected. Yeah, they say the school to the extent of um, further direct burning, but obviously the school, the rest of the school will be out of action for a while due to the uh, water being turned off, heating supplies, electricity supplies, smoke damage to the rest of the building. So although even though it's direct burning has been saved, there is water damage to the ground floor as well as it's percolated through the floors. Those affected can't quite believe what has happened. Uh, it's terrible, like loads of books and all, everything's ruined, basically. It costs loads. I think it's horrible how someone could do it and how, um, how much money it's going to cost for it to be made up again. Teachers at the school say they'll let parents know when classes are resuming through the local media. Andrew Pate at Barnum near Bognor Regis for Meridian News. Commuters are being told they can use a train service which up till now has been for the exclusive use of Gatwick Airport customers. The move, though, has incensed the British Airport's authority. They've launched a campaign to stop proposals to allow the Gatwick Express to pick up at East Croydon. But the Strategic Rail Authority says the move would benefit everyone. The Gatwick Express offers airline passengers a high-speed rail service between central London and Gatwick Airport. Trains stop only at Victoria and Gatwick, and that means journey times average just 30 minutes. That's a great deal quicker than other modes of transport, no traffic jams to contend with, nor expensive parking charges to pay. But the Gatwick Express may not be boasting such speedy travel for much longer. The Strategic Rail Authority is planning to change the service. It wants trains to continue onto the south coast, stopping at East Croydon Station so that commuters can use it too. The British Airports Authority, which is responsible for Gatwick, says the proposals would be disastrous. The problem is they're now actually trying to take away the dedicated Gatwick Express airport service and actually combine those passengers with passengers that travel to and from London. And the specially designed trains for, for airport passengers are designed to cope with lots of luggage. And unfortunately, the other trains are only really suitable if you're carrying nothing more than a briefcase. Commuters on the Brighton to London line have long complained that the Gatwick Express whistles past half empty, leaving them standing on the platform waiting for trains that are invariably overcrowded. The SRA says the changes will result in more frequent services and more seats for everyone using the line. BAA begins a campaign tomorrow to halt the SRA's proposals in their tracks. It'll be leafleting passengers at both Victoria and Gatwick Station, as well as writing to each of the South East MPs. Ros Upton at Gatwick for Meridian News. 
French police believe the Earl of Shaftesbury, who went missing more than a month ago, is probably dead. Anthony Ashley Cooper from Hove was last seen checking out of the seafront Noga Hilton in Cannes in France. A number of items stolen from him have since been recovered by police and fingerprints have led them to identify one of the thieves. He's known to officers as a violent man capable of carrying out a kidnap and murder. Walkers in Brighton are deliberately trespassing on land in a protest. It plans to fence it off. An undercliff walkway has been closed by the council after a series of rock falls, but campaigners want it reopened. They say the cliffs are safe and that people should be allowed access to the path, which has been described as a unique geological site. A row has broken out in Dorset over the future of one of the county's most famous buildings. Upton House on the outskirts of Poole was left as a gift to the borough by the Llewellyn family nearly half a century ago. It's in urgent need of repairs, but the bill for that will run into millions. Upton Park has been a popular spot for walkers and picnickers since it was opened to the people of Poole 25 years ago. But the future of the house at its centre has now come under the spotlight. The ground floor is used as a council meeting venue, but other parts of the building have been neglected and millions of pounds now needs to be spent on it. If not, it would become structurally unsafe over the next few decades and would have to be knocked down. Those are millions which Poole can't afford. There's, there's some issues in the house that are quite expensive long term. We've managed to do some decorating and make some improvements, but when you come to the fabric of the house, we actually need to find some capital investment to preserve the house for the future, to keep it as, a, as an asset for the people of Poole. A report to the council on the house's future came up with a number of options, the most likely of which would be some sort of private business partnership venture. But to the horror of the charity which organises fundraising for Upton, one stated option is to sell it off completely. The option of sale would be over my dead body. I can say no more. Because it, is that because it's supposed to be there for the people of Poole? It was deeded to the people of Poole by the Llewellyns in 1957. The group is now preparing for a fight over the house, but the council has said it will launch a new consultation on its future, with them included. I would never be recommending to Cabinet that we knock this building down. I can't ever see myself recommending that we sell it. It was given to the people of Poole for the enjoyment of the people of Poole, and that's what I want to achieve. But, you know, if we allow it to dilapidate and fall down, the public won't have any access to it at all. And that's, that's an important point. The clock is ticking on Upton House. Decisions need to be made about the future before its disrepair passes the point of no return. Martin Dowse in Poole for Meridian News. It's only been... Well, let's take a look at the weather now with Martin Davies. <laughs> Difference with Sea France. Sponsors of Meridian Weather. Hello, good evening. We normally claim about 85% accuracy with our weather forecast, but with charts as settled as this one, we should be able to do a lot better than that. That's tomorrow's chart, high pressure keeping the weather fronts away from us, and the patterns are going to stay pretty much like this for most of the week ahead. So here in the south, at least, it looks like a very quiet week's weather. Now, overnight tonight, we'll keep a lot of cloud around. One or two fog patches are possible where the cloud breaks up, and in the coldest spots, temperatures perhaps down to around 4, but no widespread frost tonight. And then tomorrow, like the last few mornings, a bit of a grey and misty start to the day, I think. But it will be a day of light winds and temperatures creeping up slowly. The odd bright spell peeping through maybe around the middle of the day. And with light winds, temperatures 9s and 10s, it shouldn't feel too bad at all. 10, of course, is just 50 Fahrenheit. As I say, the outlook is pretty settled. You'll see the whole week unfold behind me there. You may just get the odd little spots of drizzle on the odd day when the cloud thickens up a little bit, but no rain at all to speak of. No frost either. Nighttime temperatures staying above freezing. Daytime temperatures, well, that really depends on just how much the cloud hangs around. We're expecting a lot of clouds, so probably top temperatures around 8s and 9s, but a quiet week ahead. And that's all for now. We'll be back during GMTV tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.